Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. First things first, I hope you're having a magical day. Secondly, thank you for taking the time to support the channel. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you don't already know, my name's Hello Good Game. The pleasure is entirely mine. And I will be your host within today's Magic the Gathering Arena deck guide video, playing an alternative deck against the best decks uh, in the world. No doubt the uh, standard meta is aggressive, but uh, like I said, we like to remain creative on the channel while being as competitive as possible. So something very special for you within today's video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help support breaking down a uh, Golgari black and green uh, aggro deck that utilizes the new roll token mechanic. So I'm calling it uh, aggro, if you will. And uh, we're going to break down the deck list, right? Talking about all the strategies and synergies held within the list. Just giving you a bit of a deeper understanding as to what uh, the deck entails and how to effectively pilot it as a player, right? Uh, and then going a little bit more in-depth within our Mythic Ranked gameplay footage against both the best decks and players in the game right now. No jokes, full cap. And then, uh, you know, after this... We're going to break down the deck one more time, uh, you know, just glossing over things. Was there anywhere that we could improve? And if so, how? Also wrapping up with, uh, you know, any channel news and uh, general shenanigans that we might have to say. OK, so again, you know, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. If you want to help out, it's really easy. But bop, bop, leave a like. Uh, it is literally what feeds me. So cheers to everybody liking these videos every day, you guys. Oh, my. Just yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look at the deck. Uh, my gratitude for the likers knows no bounds, right? I don't even have a word. I just have to scream. <laughs> Golgari Ag Roll is uh, kind of like a Golgari Spring Roll, but a little bit more aggressive. So we got a 3.0 average mana value with 24 land in the deck to support. And, uh, you know, we're getting down and dirty with some of the most aggressive cards in the new set. Building around the Mosswood Dread Knight for two. It's a 3-2 with Trample, and when it dies, you may cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn, which after you cast as the adventure, you can recast as the creature because it's going to go into exile for you to cast, right? So this is phenomenal, and it's just going to keep coming back until they exile it, which we absolutely love. Or we don't cast it until the end of our next turn, which would be our own fault, our own damn vault. And uh, at Sorcery Speed, as the adventure, we do have Dread Whispers for two, drawing a card and losing one life. Oh, that's fine because, you know, we're building around Shoulder the Apocalypse for 4 4 5 with Death Touch. And whenever you draw, gain 2 life. So we're really only uh, going to be gaining 1 life from this, uh, which is great. You know, draw a card, gain 1 life, you know, come back from the grave later to do it over again. Um, it's the best. And of course, whenever your opponent's going to draw a card, they're going to lose 2 life. So this is going to drain them as well. But you already knew that. Other new cards within the deck will be the Elvish Archivist for two. It's a zero one. And whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put two plus one plus one counters on the Elvish Archivist, triggering only once each turn. And then whenever one or more enchantments enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card again only once each turn. So the roll tokens are enchantment auras, which will trigger the draw on the Archivist, right? It's a zero one, which makes it a great target for the Spiteful Hex Mage's Cursed Roll Token making it now a 1-1 one, one that can gain those plus one plus one counters right uh it'll also if placed on the um archivist will allow the hex mage to remain its original three two for one which is doggone goofy sometimes you know you don't get that uh, liberty you're gonna have to put that cursed roll token on itself but if you do have multiple mages you can stack them all on one creature and that's gonna help you get uh, the job done there as well which is really cool so great value there we have additional roll tokens within the deck via Royal Treatment for one at instant speed. Now, two copies of this in the deck for a little protection. Target creature you control gains Hexproof until the end of turn. Create a Royal Roll Token attached to it, uh, and it will give plus one, plus one, and Wart one, which is actually quite nice as far as the residual effects uh, go. That Wart's pretty cool, right? So uh, a nice way to protect our creatures while uh, accumulating uh, additional draws through the Elvish Archivist and... Um, you know, staying alive. <laughs> Our final roll token here will be the Lord Skitter's Blessing for two, and when it enters the battlefield, create a wicked roll, attach it to a creature you control, and then at the beginning of your draw step, if you control an enchanted creature, you lose one life and draw an additional card. And again, you know, losing one life to draw a card that now gains you two life with Shouldered is super duper above board. And uh, with not only that, but it is itself, um, you know, an enchantment, which is great. 
Uh, one of our final new cards within the deck will be the Gumdrop Poisoner. Now, we have plenty of life gain within the deck to take advantage of her ability as a 3 power 2 toughness with lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, up to one target creature gets minus X, minus X until the end of turn where X is the amount of life that you've gained this turn. This is, uh, you know, super duper acceptable. We have the Gumdrop Poisoner, which has lifelink herself. We'll also be utilizing the Flesh Gorger, which has lifelink, as well as the Lockthorn Sorn generating a little bit of life. The Tempt with Treats, one mana instant speed adventure, creating a food token can give us a life gain. The Restless Cottage can also create a food token, allowing for a little bit of additional life gain, which is great. And finally, Gix's Command, giving lifelink to a creature, and Shoulder It's, uh, you know, general life gain that's going to happen, right? So there's plenty of life gain in the deck. Don't worry, the Gumdrop is plenty effective. And uh, balancing that out with the uh, Sun Slayer Hero 3. But before that, let's talk about the last new card within the deck. The Virtue of Persistence for 7. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target card from a graveyard into the battlefield under your control. This is our main goal. Get to 7, play this, win the game. Uh, it's very hard to deal with if they do not have enchantment removal, right? Because these creatures, again, unless exiled, will keep coming back turn after turn. And it's it's brutal, especially with shoulders in your deck, right? And then, you know, we already mentioned the Lockthwain, Lockthwain Soren, Scorn. Oh my gosh. For two, it's a sorcery speed as the adventure. Target creature is going to get minus three, minus three until the end of turn. And you will gain two life, which is beautiful. So, um, you know, some removal. Let's just get through it. Three copies of Cutdown, destroying target creature with total power and toughness five or less for one. Three copies of this in deck. Two copies of Go for the Throw, also at instant speed, but for two mana, destroying target uh, non-artifact creature, which is great. Um, the Gumdrop can remove, we already mentioned this, through the ability. Gix's Command can remove for five mana at Sorcery, choosing two of the four, putting two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains lifelink to the end of turn. We've mentioned this. Destroying each creature with power two or less. Almost all of our creatures are power two or greater, except something that's equipped with the Hexmage Curse World token, which we can definitely deal with and get around it. We can also apply these plus two counters to avoid that. Furthermore, uh, return two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. And finally, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that they control. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, and then aside from that, some other cards within the deck that we love, the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It's a 3-3 three, three with lifelink via the prototype, which triggers the Elvish Archivist, giving it two plus one plus one counters. Keep in mind that the Tempt the Treats is an instant speed artifact for a surprise block because two plus one plus one counters is actually quite substantial in the uh, the turn of things when you know, you're know you like, oh, it's a zero one, I can attack into it. Ah! <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, things like this, right? You're gonna see more of that within the gameplay that's a little bit more in depth, if you will. Um, of course, you know, this is a seven five if you're casting it for seven, which is great. And it will have ward uh, forcing your opponent to pay life equal to its power, which is pretty cool. Glissa is great here for three is a three three with first strike and death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Drawing a card, losing one life, destroying an enchantment or removing up to three counters from target permanent. So all of these are super respectable within the deck. We have the waste. We have the glade for you uh, consistency and the mire and endures for utility around some basics to get us through the day. A very fun deck to play in an incredibly aggressive meta. Uh, we've got the life gain to sustain ourselves against the mono red. Ideally, you know, it's still a coin toss. And, um, you know, I think we're quick enough to get under some of the domain decks. We've got the removal to balance, keep our attack lanes open, get those stompers out of here, the Zendikar, the Atraxa. Again, it's a coin toss. And then the Esper control, um, you know, we're grinding. We have that Mosswood Dread Knight just to keep that draw going, keep that draw going, get through the deck. And, uh, you know, that one, it's a coin toss as well. But, you know, this is what we get for the creativity's sake. Uh, new decks every day. You know, I can testify to that for the last four years in a row. We pumping them out. And, you know, we remain in Mythic competing against not only the best players, but decks as well. Um, continuing to vet ourselves further within the community, which is great. So, you know, thank you all so much for the support. I appreciate you uh, for making this journey possible. I hope you guys enjoy not only this deck, but all of the others uh, that we made and will continue to make. Cheers, kick back, relax, enjoy, and well, let's lose some games. <laughs> Get some top meta decks. All right. Uh, opponent's going to go first here. It's a little bit of a slower start, but uh, there's some stuff. We can cast some spells. 
I might play slow with that land. Hold up our removal. And if not, there's a treasure token. That's great, too. But I'd sure love to kill a creature here, you know? Let me see your Feldon. I mean, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. What's that do? Does it get a Wicked Roll token attached to it? Does it? Does it put its lotion on its skin? Why I got a... No damage. No darn midge. We actually should have went for this uh, that turn. Because I don't want to do it on three now. Maybe we'll do it on four? Oh. Okay. Name one thing you should have kept in your hand. Cut down. Okay, we need some removal quickly. Perfect. Set our stop. Just so they're not playing another squee to replace it. I'm going to force them to combat. Or kill something that's stronger. Right? That choice is ours because we're waiting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It could be a monstrous roll. And I would not like that. Because they're still going to cast it on something else. But yeah, they're, they're doing it here. Shoot. But it's either you try to bait or get hit with, uh, you know, that extra zombie or whatever, goblin. So it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right. This is good. Can it survive? Because next turn it's removal with the poisoner. Mm-hmm. They need to kill this. It cannot survive. They just have to pay three life. Yeah. Good on them. They're very lucky to have that. That's, uh, you know, it's content creator. That's what happens. It's like, you know, what's that one card that you could lose to? It's like, oh, there it is. I'm sure it's actually like that for all of you. You know, it's just a magic, the gathering thing. Welcome to Arena. All right. Uh, that would activate that, and I hate it. So let's go sack food gain some life gobble 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 dunk on your bloodthirsty okay still a good play still a good play replaying their squee that's fine we're gonna gix command our face off no <gasps> oh i hate you that's really good against us Ouch, ouch, ouch. Because then they can still squee, right? We are in danger. Please overextend and all simultaneously don't kill me. <laughs> right? Please overextend and then also simultaneously don't kill me. Monstrous roll. No, they're going for the, the squee. They're going for the squee. Can we survive? It's going to cost all of their mana, all four mana. And they've got one card left in hand. It's probably burn damage that gets us next turn. Except we're going to hit them with the life gain if we can survive. If we can survive. So we know we have a clean blocker on something. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we know this is going to die. It may as well block something that's strong. And we want to keep this alive. We're still taking three to two. Ouch, 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 ouch. It was a land. Oh, wow. Beautiful. 
it's a beautiful thing. We pushed it to the limit. Push it to the limit. And uh, this is going to be absolutely game-changing momentum. Oh, my Lord. No way you topped another Warcrafting. There's no a Devastator. Oh, big boy. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Off the top, working in conjunction, lowering its total power and toughness. Get blasted. And uh, I don't know if I want to do this. Hey, we're still right on that edge. Because there's another squee coming our way, hitting for three. But if we hit for five here, and next turn is nine. Not playing this. Maybe, no, just not playing it here. I don't think a single spell from their hand would do it. And then Squee only hits for three. So they need to play Squee and just not attack. Defend the cottage. One mana. It could be a monster roll, actually. I was thinking that uh, tapped them. Oh, no. They could have lethal. It could be a monstrous roll or rage. It's not. Theirs is empty. They have to block that. Down to two. This is so close. They could kill us here. Two cards in hand. Either way, this is a good game. Great match, dude. Chandra pushes us to four. A third mana generated. Four mana, three, four damage, three mana. Not impossible. One card in hand law. They take a draw. It's a land. It goes straight to exile. They can't channel the land from exile, nor do they have the mana. It's a Kumano down to four. Good game. Wow. We got pretty lucky there, right? We that, that life gain. Game changing momentum. Opponent going first. I do not like the land, so it's a Molly. Keeping six. Hex Mage can go away. My mouse. That's why I do it around so it can't. <laughs> can't trick me, homie. Oh no. More mono red. On the play. The meta is still that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, why wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. You're good at this game. <laughs> All right. Roly poly oly. Just put the second on the first, and yeah, that's okay. All right, can the uh, Flesh Gorger win the game? Probably not, but we shall hope. Don't you dare, dude. Oh, Lord, have mercy on our souls. Down to nine. Ouch, homie, that's very good. Go, go, gadget, life game. Next turn, we double draw, push it to four, kill Kimono. If we survive. No way, Jose. Good game, bro. They did that on two lands. I, you know, that's great. 
Very, very cool. Single player experience here, obviously. The two land terror. Wow, that's phenomenal. Dear wizards, mm, think about fixing your game, okay? Thanks. All right, opponent's going to go first, but uh, it's all right. It's all right. We've got a two drop here. We've got a three drop. Looking for a second black source. Hello, good game. Oh, wow, mono red on the play. Again? I don't, I don't even know what's the point. We may as well just scoop up, right? Like, they, like, they may as well be playing against Sparky. And, of course, they're always on the play. That's one of the bonuses of Mono Red. It's being on the play. Which is fine. I get it. You know, grind it out, boys. Sometimes I do it, too. But it's like... Damn, homie. Y'all play for real. I'm going to just pass over hold removal. Like, this is going to get blasted anyways, you know? You think there's a uh, a roll? That's kind of what I'm hoping to interact with. All right, we get some value. Let's go. We're still probably going to lose, though, because, you know, it's not enough. You might get lucky here. And keep in mind, so, you know, we're falling short while removing their creatures, while pummeling the field with lifelink creatures as well, and uh, still not enough. You know? It's, uh, it's truly brutal. Oh, sure. Yeah, get get it. Get it, dude. Yeah, for four to eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good at this game. He said facetiously. He, he tried to say. <laughs> Come on, shoulder. Get a smooth brain like me to victory against Mono Red. You can do it. They just... Lost their flaming rend. I have no words. I have no words. Just get wrecked. Mono red on the play. You can't keep up. You can't keep up. Yeah, they're obviously the main character. I'm just another Sparky. Just another Sparky. Oh my god. Down to two. I need life gain off the top. No. Next turn, if we survive, which we won't. Please just cast it. There's no need to be fancy. Like, you got 10 other people to roll through in the next five minutes, so can I just be on my way? Oh, my God. Dude! Yeah, like, what? What was taking that time? You know, just getting one out quick? Come on, bro. All right, opponent's going to go first. You know, mono red on the play. Here's my mountain. Really? Interesting. Another way to lose. That's okay, though. You know, it, it, it's whatever. It, welcome to magic, you know. Try not to get hung up on the wins and losses and just have some fun. Just have some fun. Oh, my mouse. That's supposed to be a creature. I'm going to throw this thing through a window. Every time there's two decisions to do on a card, my, my mouse is like turbo clicking. And it's not good. It's like, I, oh man, it's so, I hate it. Ah. Uh, www dot, I dislike that so much. Let's get a creature out. I mean, at some point they'll counter or just remove. I don't want to put too many creatures out. 
only one Dread Knight at a time because they're going to be going into exile. So we want to be keeping that draw ability available, which is, you know, my only one at a time in play. The other can sit in our hand because I'm not in a hurry because it's not going to get us anywhere. It's just, you know, Esper Control, Mono Red Aggro, Domain Midrange. It's a very fun set. The meta is just so much different than it was. Right? Changed drastically. Went from having five decks, not only three. They're not new. They're the same of the five, but we trimmed down on it. We trimmed down. You know? Why why play mono white humans anymore? Overrated. Just play mono red, it's better. Um, yeah. I don't really want to do anything. Um, I guess I'll take a draw. Playing as slow as possible against these good, you know, control decks. It's like whatever, just uh we're gonna try to retain as much value per turn as possible and you know, not give up three for ones, certainly, and you know, try to limit those two for ones. They're gonna happen, but try to limit them, right? Bop, bop, bop. Bop, bop, bop. Please be patient, HGG. Okay, I like those draws. I like those draws. Let's just take that hit. It's a Wandering Emperor, obviously. I wish we had the um, royal role here for protection. Yeah. Nice exile. Right. It's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. I'm going to feed them our first shoulder since they're tapped out in mana. And I'll manually dunk on the mites with a cut down. I didn't play second creature. Uh... Okay. I didn't want to overfeed them. I'm just going to scoop up with a counter spell here. Should have done this last turn. Let's try to do it this turn. There's no protection, so it doesn't matter, but they'll just do it on the stack. They don't have it. Looking for down to 15. Put it on ourselves. It is a double draw if the Hex Mage survives with the Blessing, which is good. Still at 14 life, not a concern against control so much. Farewell is crippling. Path gets us. Okay. There goes our draw. They're tapped. Force them into it again. Three cards left in hand. Drawing to 11. I mean, the life total here is so hard to connect in because, you know, they have almost infinite life gain within the deck. Three, three's fine. Don't care. There's no block. We let it through. 
Right. No thanks. Take our turn, gain some life. Let's try to draw. Land and play. Let's attempt removal. We get it. I'm not going to tap, but I'll play a second creature. I don't think we can. I don't think we can attack. And if we were going to attack, it would have to be on the Emperor because she would just minus on us. So I am just going to sit here. What do we think of that? Is that a, a decent thought line or am I out to lunch? Wouldn't be surprising if I was. <laughs> Force them to have it is maybe not super applicable here. Maybe it is still. That's hard to say. I'm just expecting them to have a second emperor. But then again, we're just now, in instead of attacking in fear, waiting for that field wipe to come. No, dude, it's yours. Have it. Don't care, huh? I'm suspecting a, a seat of the empire or whatever. Let's first see where we get. I'm thinking another emperor. That's fine. Interact with it, homie. No? Okay. We get to re-adventure this, which I don't think is bad. Just filling our hand. I mean, even though it's land, it's fine. Play another. Hold up our throat. Um, You know, if they're going to exile stuff, I might just uh, go for the throw my own Dread Knight. Now, if they didn't have another Wandering Emperor, we could attack. Take four. They draw to two. I can't in good faith do it. We're already close, down to six. Maybe these are misplays. That's really, that's the joy of magic, right? That's fine. That's fine. Attacks are fine. Do not care. Take your poison. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Yep, 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 yep. Here's a field wipe. And we pray that it's not a uh, might-based field wipe. Really? This is an interesting bank. Take the draw. Three cards in hand.
Why let them minus and just gain that life back, though, eh? Let's take out the Emperor. Or at least attempt to. What I would give for a, a royal treatment right here. And then we could have taken lethal ages ago. It was. It was. So. What do we do here? Kill our own bro for two? They're still going to gain the life. I'm going to do it. Then we can adventure more. They don't gain the life, actually. I thought that life gain still triggered. <sighs> this is nice to do, but this is going to be really good just to probably take lethal next turn if they don't have the fuel ready. Till the end of your next turn. So we still have this. Let's just play in. It's okay. Still only two permanents in play. I mean, the blessings, whatever, at this point. Uh, it doesn't count. Counterspell? Yes. Okay, and it lands. I mean, it's dealt with. It's At least it's dealt with. Down to four. Two cards in hand. Plus is irrelevant. Don't care. The three poison is far worse. No blocks. Seed of the Empire. What's the other one? What's the other card? Mm, that's not bad, actually. It's very good, but we're going to die. There's no way it's a third Wandering Emperor. A royal roll would be so good here. Oh. Are you kidding me? And they still have enough for another might. Bro, three in a row. How do you play around that? All right, well, let's see the field wipe then, dude. Blockers are coming out, homie. Bro. Bro. The triplets. I, that actually gets me fairly excited. <laughs> we block in here, homie. We got it. Those poison counters are nasty. The life total doesn't matter. We'll still block the ones, right? I have got new moves to teach you. Beep. Mm. Boop. Oh, we just can't take three. We block them all. No. I mean, it's technically lethal like this. There's, they're not going to match. Do they have a proliferate spell? If they have proliferate, they win. Let's pre-clap. Let's give them a pre-clap here, chat. Pre-claps, pre-claps. First strike. I see you, first strike. Almost walked right into that. To nine, if they have proliferate, they win. We have a massive attack. Land.
cottage out. A fourth wandering emperor? Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay, this is going to be something. Well, that's only one step to the puzzle. What is that last card? You're going to get me with your last card? It's the Seat of the Empire that we had forecast earlier. That's impressive. That's really impressive. And they bring out a third. We need to block three creatures. Nice. Lawless. That's brutal. We can only block two of them. Well, it is what it is. Great game. We tried our best. And I think we did really good against a control deck at the end of the day. Um, just those triple emperors is ridiculous. That's very good. Oh my gosh. Becky, look at that brew. It's just so big. <laughs> what? Sure, they're getting down and dirty. Um, you know, it is what it is. We didn't mean to build the deck around shoulder whatsoever, but the meta is so doggone aggressive that, you know, you're just doing yourself a disservice if you don't. And the scary thing about the meta is that none of them use shoulder. Hmm, Esper Control, not really using shoulder. Uh, Mono Red, obviously not. Domain, not. And shoulder is the most broken card I've ever seen. And yet, we have these standard decks, which are crushing, right? So that's actually maybe more concerning that these other decks are able to school um, shouldered some of the time. Obviously not all of the time. Sometimes, you know, she gets down and dirty and uh, is able to survive. We have the protection within the deck, which I wouldn't mind increasing. You know, how many times we're like, you know, if we had protection, we could get this looking at you, Wandering Emperor. But, uh, you know, at the same time to have too many copies of it might also hinder the deck as well right so you know i do like the build i'm not sure that i would change it much um very very nice uh building around the dread knight which i think is a great card and i think you know at the end of the day it's playable outside of golgari it's not double colors at all so you know you can play this in a variety of three color decks as well and I do believe that it's just an auto include. If you have green and black in your deck, this is an auto include as it generates just a ton of value. You know, just like the decadent dragon, right? Um, and there's an idea, right? Jund is, uh, it's hard to keep up with long term and um, allows you to compete against some of these more aggressive decks. So it's definitely something uh, that I like whenever we can find something new that does compete, right? Um, other ways to improve the deck you know i'm not entirely sure i'm obviously open to your input um you guys obviously watched the video what did you think how could we improve the deck hit me up in the comments below and of course if you haven't already done so make sure to like the video on your way out if you found any value or entertainment in today's video and uh, appreciate you as always i hope you have a magical day check out another video if you want and we'll uh, we'll see you soon in the next take care